Good morning. Tom and Cher coming to you representing the Monaco Pentecostal Church of God. It is Monday, January 17th. 20 degrees and cloudy in Rhinelander this morning. Yes. And we are live. Alive. Alive. We are alive. Yes, we are. So we're, we're excited. We're glad to be here. We are. Are you yes. glad to be here? Are you getting situated? I'm getting situated. Good. Glad to hear that. All right. All right. Man. So we're official. Yes. We're officially live. <laughs> Sometimes it, it, it's unclear whether you're actually on, so I have my phone here. And also I can see the comments quicker for some reason on my phone than I can uh, on the computer that we're using to broadcast. Yeah. So, so uh, announcement, uh, no devotions Thursday and Friday. We are going to Indianapolis, Indiana to the Regional Leadership Conference for the Pentecostal Church of God. Mm -hmm. uh, it's exciting. We were there two years ago. Uh, last year it was canceled because of COVID. And it will be our first time there as pastors of a church. Right, and, and Tom will also be representing the men of the district because he's the men's uh, district director. And I'll be representing the women because I'm the women's district. How do we get all them jobs? Baby? Nobody I don't else volunteer. <laughs> <laughs> no. no, we I were mean, elected they, into they, this. they vote us in. So. <laughs> <laughs> and... Uh, I enjoy doing the men's uh, stuff. I like, would like to see us more active as a district and also in all our churches locally. So anyway, uh, anything else, housekeeping notes or anything? Nope. All right. Well, it's a, it's a cool message Sorry. this morning called Sharing Your Faith. Great. Cher's going to read it, but I will open in prayer. Okay. Heavenly Father, thank you for this uh, time together. We just ask you pour out your spirit upon us as always and lead us in this devotional. And we enjoy spending time with you. We thank you for this opportunity. In the name of your son, Jesus, amen. We also should mention that today is Martin Luther King Day. Yes. A man that had a dream. He yeah. had a dream. Um, Fought for civil rights. Well known. Um, and uh, he was a Christian and he believed with his heart. And God will will judge where, or he, I'm sorry. He's, he uh, confessed with his mouth and, and him and God know his heart. And, uh, but I do see a lot of fruit there. So we're going to acknowledge that day. And, yeah. Yeah. So anyway, anyway, <laughs> didn't plan on saying that. No, but, no, uh, obviously. <laughs> hmm. So anyway, sharing your faith as John 1, 37 through 42. He first findeth his own brother, Simon, saith unto him, have we found the Messiah, which is being interpreted the Christ? First John 1, 41. Yep. Okay. Andrew was the first disciple of Jesus to share his faith and bring another to Christ. Look who it was who he brought, Peter, yeah. who became one of the greatest apostles of Christ. He, he preached on one day, he preached on the day of Pentecost and saw 3,000 people born again. He healed a lame man, a lame man at the gate of the temple and 5,000 were born again as a result. He raised Dorcas from the dead, introduced Christianity to the Gentiles, and wrote two books of the Bible that have ministered to millions of people through the centuries. Just think of how many millions of people Peter touched and how Andrew was responsible for it all. The accomplishments of Peter's recorded in scriptures far outnumber those of Andrew. Yet, without Andrew, Peter would have not known Jesus. In, his, in the eyes of God, what Andrew did was just as important as what Peter did. 
As the one who introduced Peter to Jesus, Andrew had a part of all of Peter's exploits. Therefore, on the day we receive our rewards for the Lord, Andrew will still share every reward Peter received. You may not ever shape your world as Peter did, but God has called you to share your faith at, with others as Andrew did. Who knows, one person you lead to Jesus could be another Peter. That's really good. I like yeah. that. So, good morning, Jane. Good morning, Janie. The, the message for us is uh, we should always share our faith. And uh, we don't know uh, what God's purpose in the life of the person we're sharing with mm -hmm. is. It could be great. It could be small. But it's all important in the eyes of the Lord. Yeah. I have another story, uh, it's fairly well known, but uh, not, not very many people know who Dr. Mordecai Ham is, uh, but he was a traveling preacher. He preached some tent revivals in North Carolina. Uh, history only records one person that came to the Lord uh, because of him. Uh, I'm sure there were others. He, you know, tent revival implies a uh, large group of people, and uh, so... Anyway, um, uh, Billy Graham was uh, Mordecai's friend. He would no um, one of his friends oh, yeah. wanted to go see him, and his parents had seen him a few days before at a tent revival. Uh, but Billy Graham didn't really have a lot of interest in uh, um, going to see this uh, this preacher. Yeah. Uh, but uh, this guy that worked for his parents, his buddy said, uh, well, you know, I got that old vegetable truck, and if you come with, you can drive. Well, he wanted to drive, and, and there's other stories around it, but uh, uh, you can read the whole thing on billygram.org if you're interested. But the point is, um, Dr. Mordecai Ham brought, uh, led uh, Billy Graham to the Lord, and really the Holy Spirit did, because in his memoirs he says, well, well Dr. Ham was speaking, Another voice was speaking to me, but right. uh, but Dr. Ham was obedient, and uh, we all know the results of uh, what uh, Billy Graham Ministries has done, mm. and how many people have come to know Jesus and know about Jesus. Right. More impo importantly, know Jesus. And uh, as long as we're on the subject of one other thing, and this is not me or not my words, but Billy Graham's word is, uh, he said, "I'm on the platform." People see me and and acknowledge me, but for every person that I lead to the Lord, somebody planted that seed mm -hmm. sometimes years ago. Uh, and after after I leave, somebody needs to water that seed. Mm -hmm. And he acknowledged all of that. And and the other thing that I find uh, instructive from from Billy Graham is that uh, he. He lived what he said. He, mm -hmm. he wanted all the glory to go to God. And he wanted everybody to come to the knowledge of Christ. Good morning, Elois. So I remember the story that we were talking about early. Okay. So when we went to Vic Victory Christian Outreach in Wisconsin Rapids, mm -hmm. there was a pastor there that came, and he was in his late 80s. Mm -hmm. Remember they came on an RV. Yep, uh, I am not remembering his name. Yeah. Uh, Anyways, right now, he was. They traveled all over. Uh, they had a lot to do with in Branson that church, uh, Rama. Yes. And this is this is a story also, and it was he was a great speaker. He he was uh, friends with the pastor that, or went to school with the pastor that actually met went him to college early in. Uh, he was the he's one of the leaders at Rama, the Rama College. Okay. Anyway, uh, the guy who was preaching and he said that he was friends with another guy, and there was going to be this girl at the Billy Graham concert. It was this guy's sister, this yeah. other guy's sister or friend or whatever, and he said, "If you come to the Billy Graham concert." Meeting, the meeting, town meeting, or uh, with me, that uh, you'll see that girl there, and there was mm -hmm. thousands of people there. He yeah. said, and 
So he sat up way up in the in the front uh, top, mm -hmm. and he was not expecting to get touched by the Billy Graham ministry. He was there looking for a girl. And do you remember this story? Kind no, of? not specifically. Oh. So anyway, he, the Billy Graham was, you know, he said his heart was really touched. And he said that Billy Graham called out to him. Because it was actually, the, I'm thinking it was probably the Holy Spirit. But Billy Graham said, you young man, or something like, up there in the balcony, come down here, you need Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> so he he said that the Lord was tugging at his heart the whole time Billy Graham was speaking. But uh, he went down there, and he gave his heart to the Lord. And he, well, he has passed away since then. But he was one of the great speakers uh, and one of the, Council for the Rama College, or that much I remember. Yeah. So, uh, it might take you saying that there's going to be a girl there, or you could drive a truck, or yeah. however you get someone, uh, lead them to the Lord. It don't matter. Yeah. As long as you lead them there. Uh, I I got one more, uh, Pastor Mike. Uh, I don't know his last name. I spoke at a men's conference uh, years ago. I call him the other Pastor Mike because our pastor was Pastor Mike. But uh, anyway, um, he wanted to date this girl. And she said, well, you got to be a Christian. You got to be baptized if you want to date me. Well, his dad or her dad was going to baptize him. And uh, him and an elder of the church were in another room praying for the guy because they knew that if if this guy uh, didn't give his heart to the Lord, all he's going to get is wet. So they're all praying for him. And uh, so he, he came with the wrong motive, uh, but he wound up receiving uh, the Lord and uh, went on to be successful in ministry and, and did wind up marrying the young lady. Uh, yeah. So... Uh, even if we come for the wrong reasons, but God you, will use that. Yeah, uh, but the end result's what's important. Right. Uh, and the people were eventually um, obedient to the Holy Spirit. Yeah. They they did give their lives to Christ. You know, if you if you did it for the wrong reason and you don't have any change of attitude, that's a whole different thing. So. Right. Because the Holy Spirit's. Um, prick, I guess you could say, on your life, or touch on your life, or on anybody's life, or his calling is so strong that when you are obedient, and you feel it, and you approach it, and you um, give your life to the Lord, uh, it's all worth it. And that's one thing about the Holy Spirit is you, I am confident, I guess you could say, that uh when somebody feels the call of the Holy Spirit or feels a calling so strong, it's the Holy Spirit. I, I agree. Uh, not of men are you going to get that right. quiet confidence. Right. And you can study the Bible front to back, and I'm not saying you shouldn't, but I'm saying you can learn about Jesus, but you need to know Jesus. Right. That's what I was. You, yeah. Well, you, you're so more fluent with words than I am. Um, not always, but... <laughs> and, that's why and you're we'll, the master of the way. <laughs> uh, and that's, uh, that's Holy Spirit also. Uh, yeah. when, when we're given the words beyond our ability uh, to speak, uh, you know, I'm not an eloquent speaker, yet Holy Spirit will guide me, will direct me, will tell me what to say, give me the words to say. And that's my prayer every time I preach is to, uh, to hear from Holy Spirit, to preach God's word and nothing of myself. Morning, Good morning, Sassy. Kathy. Sassy Kathy. Yeah. Our sister in Oklahoma. My uh, sister. Yeah, my sister too. Your sister-in-law. My sister-in-law in life, but like... my my sister in the Lord. So there. Yeah. yeah. So... And, and in all seriousness, if you ever hear me talk about my sister, it's either my sister in the Lord or my sister-in-law because I don't have any natural uh, sisters. Good morning, Uncle Joel. Good morning. So, anyway, that is what you have to do. Uh, 
is you need to reach out to everybody. And no matter what the situation, you need to lead them to the Lord because you never know who the next Billy Graham is going to be that you walk across that is going to lead millions to the Lord. Or John Smith that's going to lead one person to the Lord. Right. Uh, and, the, you know, the uh, God desires that all should come to the knowledge of his son, that all should be saved. And uh, our part in that is to convey the message. And we ask Holy Spirit for boldness and to identify people that will be receptive. Mm -hmm. uh, we might be that one person that uh, is able to, for whatever reason, God knows we don't, mm -hmm. uh, get through to that person that has been, uh, their heart has been hardened for whatever reason. And, and there's a lot of reasons, you know, maybe they've been hurt by somebody in the church mm -hmm. and, and it turned them off to Christianity. Uh, you know, Christ is always with us, but people are flawed. And, yeah. And they're, uh, they can, uh, they can experience things. And maybe, the, maybe you just, uh, you're the way you speak or whatever, God knows. Maybe you're the one that can touch them. I, I think for my children, I always pray, bring laborers of the harvest across them because you know, they're kids. They don't always listen to their, their parents. But They're not really kids anymore. They're adults. But to me, they're to kids. You, they're kids. Okay, they're in their 30s, but they're kids to me. <laughs> also, I think that I know many of people that went to church when they were young. And they got turned off because of man, because the attitude or the mm -hmm. presentation of the pastor or the man that that did it, that wrecked God. Mm -hmm. I guess so that's how you could say it. Wrecked God wrecked, in their mind. Right. It wrecked their attitude. Their attitude yep. towards church or towards, you know, God. And all they need is that one person to reach out to them and to show them that God is real mm -hmm. and it's not that person that might have skewed them in the wrong direction. Am I saying yep. that right? Yeah. And so they need a revitalization as, as you could say, a reintroduction to God in the right direction. Yep. That, you know, if man is flawed, man's not perfect. And, uh, we need to reintroduce them to God because yep. I've we've come across a couple of people said, Oh, I used to go to a church when I was a kid and and I don't want that because of this person. Right. Or because of Christians, you know, yeah. so you need to introduce reintroduce right. God to them in a loving manner. Right. And and Holy Spirit will guide you with what to say. Mm -hmm. um, you know, one thing we hear is, uh, I don't want to go to church because there's too many hypocrites there. Well, you know what? There's hypocrites at Walmart, too. Right. They got them all over. But, uh, you know, don't uh, don't let the hypocrite come between you, you and, and God. And God. In a relationship. Right. And don't use that as an excuse. That's, right. that's an excuse. We, we want to fellowship with like-minded believers. We want to hear the God's word preached. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, you know, we we know some good ones, and everybody I've ever heard preaching the word of God has had something to say to me. Right, and we're noticing online that we're like coming in and out. I don't know if you guys are seeing that. I think that's my phone. It's just, oh, okay. So I hope not. So anyway, what that's what we want to say is share your faith. Mm -hmm. You know because. Jesus is worth it. We all should go to heaven. Uh, our lives change miraculously because of Jesus. And we have to do very little. Uh, you know, God does everything. He sent the Savior. He sent his son. Uh, Jesus paid the penalty for our sins. All we have to do is accept it. Right. And uh, it's a simple thing, but it's not always easy. Right. Uh, and... As far as having to be cleaned up or, uh, you know, do the right thing, uh, give your life to the Lord. Holy Spirit will work on you from there. Yeah. And for us as, as Christians, when we tell somebody about Jesus, uh, 
we want to get them saved first before uh, and let Holy Spirit clean them up because, mm-hmm. uh, you know, we were there once. None of us were perfect. And uh, some of us were, I don't know, very imperfect isn't really a thing. But yeah, some of us did things that, that you just shouldn't do as a Christian. Well, mm-hmm. I'd say all of us did, but uh, some of us did things very outwardly that, right. um, but uh, God wants everybody to be safe. Yeah. Janie's saying that, yeah, we do lag a little. Hmm. We don't know what to do with that. We've played around with this this online thing so much that yeah, I, we don't know. I think we're a lot better than we were. Yeah. Uh, so as, we'll as long as we're getting our point across somehow, that's what, you know. We right. don't have any fantastic mega. Yeah, thing. <laughs> we're on our a laptop. Anyway, um, every week we pick a church to pray for, and they're for their congregation. Um, this one we have not prayed for yet, and it's Faith Christian Center in Oshkosh, and Bishop Mike Magnuson and his wife, Pastor Diane, or Lady Di, as I like to call her, yes, are the leaders of Faith Christian Church. Um, this is the church we went to when we, when Tom, we, <laughs> when Tom became ordained. It is, a, it is a we. Uh, and when I decided to seek credentials, Cheryl was in it with me, and uh, it's. Uh, it was an exciting journey, and I did not know I was called to pastoral ministry uh, when I decided to seek credentials, but I, I thought I'd have some kind of teaching ministry, men's ministry, and uh, anything you can learn about uh, about the Bible and about the church I thought would be good, so I did that. And, uh, and then one day you said to pastor, the Lord's calling me to church. So, yes, and, and mainly, well... I don't know. The, the Lord worked it out. I don't, you know, I I couldn't have drawn the, that plan, and if I had, I'd have goofed it up. Yeah. But, so. but uh, I hope we're obedient unto the Lord. And yeah. If we do that, He'll work the rest of it out. Good morning, Tracy. So, uh, yeah. So the Lord called us when we went. Uh, we're living in Wisconsin Rapids. We sold our home. He called us to yeah. Oshkosh. Moved in to fill in gaps, yep. and then he and called that, us to the the ministry. So. Yeah, and uh, yeah, we're still filling a gap, and uh, right. I, I want to always do that wherever there's a need and wherever the Lord points me. So, so Faith Christian Center is our is our church. Yeah, that was a long way around. There. It's yeah, uh, is our Bishop, church. Bishop Mike uh, has been there thirty five plus years, nineteen eighty four. I think yeah. he, he started that church. And, so. Yeah, that's 30, almost 38 years now. Yeah. So, anyway, that is the church we're praying for this week and for their congregation. So, if you, uh, when you're praying this week, flip them in your prayer. Um, Mm -hmm. So, anyway. We're also going to pray for our conference in Indiana that all the people that attend there will be lifted up, enlightened, and uh, so I'll go ahead and start us. Uh, Heavenly Father, uh, thank you for all you do for us. And we ask that you pour out your blessings on a conference in Indianapolis. Uh, let, uh, let everybody there come prayed up and ready to learn. And uh, we ask for traveling mercies as we go down there. And we just thank you for that opportunity. Mm-hmm. Heavenly Father, we just want to, first of all, thank you uh, for Bishop Mike and Diane, uh, for their friendship that we have with them, first and foremost, that they are our friends, Lord. And we just thank you for their their sense of humor and their sense of faithfulness that they have um, for their congregation and for the people around them. We thank you for... um, the Holy Spirit, how it moves through that church, Lord, and for the people of that congregation. They are our hearts, Lord. We love each and every one of them, and we miss them, Lord, and we just thank you 
so much for that congregation, Lord, and for Bishop and Diane. Lord, we pray that you just put an overwhelming peace in, a, in their spirits, Lord, and we help, pray that uh, you rebuild that church in 2022, Lord, that you rebuild the people in the congregation and you lift Pastor and Diane up. Yeah. Amen. Amen and amen. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Good morning. Oh, Jess, Nathan, how are you guys? We love you. Yeah, we want to thank you guys for watching. Um, we just want to just say that, you know, as this is going on, we, if it wasn't for you guys listening, uh, we feel like this, how would, how, you know what I'm trying well, to say. Um, we want to be a community-based church. Right. And uh, we want the, the Sunday service to be our recharge, uh, mm -hmm. where we can come and be ourselves. Not that we're not ourselves, but that we can be, uh, we can let uh, people see us mm -hmm. as, as, at our worst and we want to go out in the community and be able to present uh to model christ as best we as we humans can do right and uh, one way we do that is through these devotionals and mm -hmm. it, it was just an idea but uh it has succeeded beyond our wildest dreams yeah and, so we just if, want to thank if you one guys person for... is touched by this if one person comes back to the lord or comes to the lord because of it it is worth it and uh, it is worth it to him as well. But before, that he desires everyone should be saved. Good morning, my sister Chrissy. She's on <sighs> too. Love right. you. We love you too. Oh, it's a family affair. Look at that. Yeah. My uncle and my sisters and our friends and family. Yep. Boiled. And we know that Donnie will be watching it back. And he doesn't have Facebook, Don but he watches it. Mom, on. boy. Um, We're what's that other thing your brother watches on because he doesn't do Facebook? Oh, YouTube. YouTube. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> You're silly. Uh, and then my, my step-niece, Jess. We love you guys. Um, we're very proud of each and every one of you. And we want you guys just to have a blessed day. Smile at somebody and tell them about Jesus. Yes, and don't forget the banks are closed. <laughs> oh, I was going to go to yeah, the banks. Cheryl was all yeah. about it this morning. <laughs> well, well, it's so, a Tuesday task now. All right, love you guys. Bye now. Bye. Hi, Rhonda. Hey. <laughs> oh, my goodness. That's just exciting, right? Yes. All right. We love you guys. Love you, Ralph. Bye.